Hello and welcome back to the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass where we talk about all the medications that work on the central nervous system. And after we finished the opioid analgesics, now we are going to talk about the analgesics antibiotics and the first one is the acetaminophen which will be discussed in this video. So here we will talk about the definition, the mechanism of action, the therapeutic uses, and the adverse effects of the acetaminophen. You can always skip to other parts of this video using the chapters in the video description. And regarding the pictures, on the left we have the chemical structure of the acetaminophen. The black spheres are for the carbon atoms, the white spheres are for the hydrogen atoms, the blue sphere is for the nitrogen atom and the red spheres are for the oxygen atoms. And on the right, we have the pill shape for the acetaminophen for the famous trade name, which is called Tylenol. So first, let's explain the classification of analgesics and let's see where the paracetamol sits in relation to those. So the analgesics used in medicine are on four groups. We have the opioid analgesics, which we already discussed in this class. And then we have the non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. And the third group is the analgesics antibiotics drugs, which the acetaminophen included in. And this group include the acetaminophen, as we mentioned, and the dipyron and the nifopam. And the final group is the non-analgesic drugs that were cause analgesics for some conditions. For example, the carbamazepine, that is anti-epileptic drug that is used for trigeminal neuralgia, and the loxetine, which is an antidepressant drug that is used for diabetic neuropathy. Uh, now let's talk about an overview of the acetaminophen. So the scientific name is acetaminophen, and the most famous drug names for the acetaminophen are the paracetamol, the Tylenol, and the Panadol. It's a non-opioid analgesic antibiotic that is used to treat fever and mild to moderate pain. It is the most commonly used medication for pain and fever in US and Europe, and most probably worldwide. And it was synthesized in 1878 by the American chemist Northrop Morse. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of the acetaminophen. So it is available as oral, intravenous, and rectal formulas. Absorption of the oral formula is rapid, but the drug is extensively metabolized by the first pass effect. So once it gets absorbed into the intestine and into the blood, it goes into the portal vein and into the liver, where it would go an extensive first pass effect. And that would affect the bioavailability of this medication. So it is dose dependent. So it is 50% at 500 milligrams and it is 90% at 1000 milligrams. It is metabolized by the liver via conjugation. A portion of the acetaminophen dose given will be hydroxylated to form the N-acetyl p benzyquinone imanine, which is abbreviated as NAPKI, which will react with the sulfhydryl groups and cause liver damage. So some of the acetaminophen would be hydroxylated into this metabolite, which is called NAPKI, and this would react with the sulfhydryl groups and lead to liver damage, which will be more explained in the adverse effects section of this video. And the excretion of the acetaminophen is mainly renal uh, through urine. Here we have pictures of the different types of formulas of the acetaminophen. So on the right, we have the oral formula, and on the left, we have the vial, which is used for the intravenous formula of the acetaminophen. 
Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the acetaminophen. So it inhibits the prostaglandin synthesis in the brain. So it goes uh, through the blood and it crosses the blood-brain barrier and it would go into the brain where it inhibits the prostaglandin synthesis there and this gives us the analgesic antibiotic effects of the acetaminophen. It doesn't inhibit the prostaglandin synthesis in peripheral tissues because of the peripheral inactivation and that is why it has weak anti-inflammatory activity. So acetaminophen peripherally is deactivated and it doesn't lead to anti-inflammatory effects like the nesites does. So it is different in that way. It doesn't have anti-inflammatory effect. It only have analgesic and antibiotic effects. And it has little to no effects on the cardiovascular system, the GIT system, the respiratory system, or the platelet functions. And now remember with the aspirin, it affects the platelets, but acetaminophen does not. So yeah. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the acetaminophen. So it is used analgesic, meaning it relieves pain for mild to moderate pain, like headache, for example, migraines, uh, and myalgia, and mild musculoskeletal pain. It is also used as antibiotic, which means it relieves fever. Paracetamol used in arthritis pain is not effective, and if it is given, it has to be combined with ibuprofen or other nesides. It is useful in patients who can't take nesides because of the gastric problems or any other side effects of the nesides, or they does not need an extra anti-inflammatory effect that comes with the nesides. Acetaminophen is very safe in pregnancy. It is much safer than aspirin and it is used as analgesic antibiotic in children with viral infections or chickenpox because remember these children with viral infections and chickenpox if you give them aspirin they would get Rye syndrome. So acetaminophen is better in these situations and paracetamol is inferior to uh, nesides in pain relief but it is safer and better tolerated by patients. Now let's talk about the adverse effects of the acetaminophen. So it is well tolerated as I mentioned before and it may lead to allergic reactions like skin rash and fever and uh, the most important side effect or adverse effect of the uh, acetaminophen is the liver damage. So in toxic doses of acetaminophen, about 15 grams in adults, 4 grams in children, there is hepatotoxicity, which is in form of centrolobular necrosis. And it is sometimes associated with renal tubular necrosis. So at those doses, the 15 grams in adults and 4 grams in children, there is toxicity to the liver, there is liver damage, and there, is, there may be also renal damage. And it is very important to know about that because acetaminophen overdose is the most common cause of acute liver failure. So let's explain now how the liver damage occurs with acetaminophen overdose. So remember I mentioned in the pharmacokinetics that the acetaminophen is metabolized by the liver via conjugation and abortion of the acetaminophen dose given will be hydroxylated to form an acetyl benzoquinone imidine, which is abbreviated as NEPKI, which will react with the sulfur hydryl groups and cause liver damage. At normal doses, of acetaminophen, the NAPKI metabolite will react with the sulfur hydryl groups in the glutathione. The glutathione is a substance that is produced by the liver and it works to detoxify the NAPKI metabolite. And the result is an untoxic substance. Uh, but at high doses of acetaminophen, 
the glutathione stars will be depleted because we are actively using those stars to detoxify the napki uh, they would be depleted and the napki cause liver injury because it can't detoxify anymore so early symptoms of hepatic damage include nausea vomiting diarrhea and abdominal pain and late symptoms include jaundice and edema which are symptoms of liver failure the patients with hepatic disease at a higher risk of hepatic damage from acetaminophen and acetaminophen also lead to renal damage as we mentioned but it also lead to hemolytic anemia methemoglobinemia but those are rare now if we have a patient with acetaminophen overdose how we treat that so we start with the gastric lavage gastric lavage will be very beneficial in removing the dose of the acetaminophen that is still available in the stomach and it, it, it is very useful in the first 12 hours after ingestion and we use the N-acetylcysteine which is a self-hydral donor medication to restore the hepatic glutathione so we give this medication to the patient uh, it is the most effective if it started within 8 hours after a drug administration and hemodialysis which is better within the first 12 hours after ingestion of the medication finally let's talk about the acetaminophen dosing so the effective dose of acetaminophen is from 325 to 500 milligrams four times daily for adults and for children it is 10 to 15 milligrams per kilograms and that is effective for treatment of pain and fever and dosing in adults should not exceed the 4 grams per deciliter mark and acetaminophen dose of 4 grams associated with liver function uh, testing abnormalities so it is better to not exceed that dose and with that we reach the end of this video thank you guys for watching please make sure to like this video and subscribe and if you want to support more you can, you can buy subscribing to the patreon link provided in the description of this video thank you guys for watching and peace